good morning everyone uh, today the topic we are covering is emotions and disorders of emotion so uh, today we'll be covering emotions definition and theories basic emotions physiology of emotion then we'll be covering disorders of emotion that is normal emotional reaction abnormal emotional reaction abnormal expression of emotion morbid expression of emotion and morbid disorders of emotion so coming to definition of emotion stirred up state caused by physiological changes occurring as a response to event and which tend to maintain or abolish the casual event according to vibro emotion is actually memory and feeling intervened complex feeling state with psychic somatic and behavioral components external manifestations of emotions is affect this definition is from ctp uh, 10th edition it is a customary uh, to distinguish between feelings and emotions feeling is defined as a positive or negative reaction to some experience or event and is the subjective experience of emotion so according to ekman and friesen uh, they gave this uh, uh, in 1971 basic emotions include anger happiness surprise disgust sadness and fear now uh, coming to physiology of emotions many of the bodily changes that occur in emotion are produced by the activity of a part of nervous system called the autonomic nervous system this system is a part of peripheral nervous system with two divisions sympathetic system and parasympathetic system sympathetic nervous system it's active in many strong emotions especially fear and anger causes the discharge of hormones especially epinephrine and norepinephrine parasympathetic nervous system tends to be active when we are calm and relaxed the pattern of bodily activity characteristic of emotion is a blend of both nervous system now uh, the physiology of emotions the parasympathetic nerves that is rest and digest it when it it becomes active it results in constrict pupils stimulates saliva slows down the heart beat constricts the airways stimulate the activity of stomach inhibit the release of glucose and stimulate the gall bladder stimulate activity of intestines contracts the bladder promotes erection of genitals and sympathetic nerves that is fight or flight activation results in dilate pupils inhibit salivation increases the heart beat relaxes the airways inhibit the activity of stomach stimulate the release of glucose and inhibits the gall bladder also it inhibits the activity of intestines it secretes epinephrine and norepinephrine relaxes the blood and promotes ejaculation and vaginal contraction now coming to the theories of emotion james lange theory of emotion developed by william james and carl lange emotions are the result of self awareness of physical and bodily changes in the presence of a stimuli in other words this theory proposes that people have a physiological response to environmental stimuli and that their interpretation of their physical response that results in an emotional experience so a event results in arousal results in interpretation and resulting in emotion for example you are walking down a dark alley uh, late night you hear footsteps behind you and you begin to tremble heart beats are faster breathing gets deepened 
you notice these physiological changes and interpret them as your bodily body's uh, preparation for a fearful situation then you experience fear now the criticism of james lyne's theory of emotion is that physiological responses are too slow to account for a rapidity of emotion and visceral responses are similar but emotional responses differ another theory is canon bart theory of emotion emotions have temporal primacy and that any visceral or behavioral change follows the emotion states that the physiological changes and cognitive awareness must occur simultaneously experience of emotion happens at the same time that physiological arousal happens neither one causes the other so event results in arousal and it results in emotion for example when someone is in a dark alley alone a sudden sound usually provokes an immediate experience of fear while the physical symptoms of fear generally follow that fear now the criticism of this canon bart theory of emotion that it leaves no room for the cognitive aspects of the origin of emotions experiment have not proven that perception of lower brain activity is the basis of emotion then the satcher singer's theory also known as two factor theory of emotion emotion comes from a combination of a state of arousal and a cognition that makes best sense of the situation that the person is in such as suggest that physiological arousal occurs first and then the individual must identify the reason for this arousal to experience and label it as an emotion so a event occurs results in arousal results in cognitive labels resulting in emotion for example you are walking a dark alley room figure uh, with gun appears the perception is that figure with a gun initiates a state of physiological arousal this state of arousal is interpreted in terms of knowledge about dark alleys and gun and state of arousal is labeled as fear now criticism of this uh, theory is that new experiments have not supported this theory. another uh, theory is cognitive appraisal theory states that emotions we feel result from appraisal or evaluation of information coming from the environmental situations or within the body in addition memories of the past encounters with similar situations dispositions to respond in certain ways and consideration of the consequence of the actions that might result from emotional state entering into appraisal the outcome of the complex appraisal of these information is the emotion as it is felt now coming to the disorders of emotion first of all the normal emotional reaction it describes emotional states that are result of events and that lie within cultural and social norms emotional reactions are normal responses to events or to primary morbid psychological experiences for example grief reaction that follows the death of loved one or the response of previously healthy person to a life threatening diagnosis unfortunately in practice there is a little attempt to distinguish these normal emotional reactions from abnormal reactions one problem is that many of the symptoms complained of are present both in normal and abnormal emotional reactions for example following bereavement it is expected that the fearfulness sleep disturbance anorexia and poor concentration will occur most intensely in the initial days and will diminish over time when the grief reaction is prolonged or becomes a depressive episode a similar constellation of symptoms is also present a full aspect of the distinction that has not been examined is functional capacity which is present in abnormal states but absent or brief in normal reactions now abnormal emotional reactions states that are understandable in the context of stressful events but are associated with more prolonged impairment in function adjustment disorders with disturbance of mood 
लाइक एंगजाइटी डिप्रेशन अदर इमोशंस और डिस्टर्बेंस ऑफ कंटर Now, anxiety is an unpleasant affective state, fear for no adequate reason. Terms like tension, stress, and taut like a wire is used, accompanied by physical symptoms such as palpitation, sweating, breathing difficulties, etc. etc. Panic attack. Sometimes anxiety may be associated with anxious foreboding. that is a sense of something terrible will happen but without the knowledge of what this will be phobia is a fear restricted to one object situation or idea associated with physical symptoms of anxiety and with avoidance most fears are learned responses such as the person who develops fears of dogs after being bitten some phobias are secondary to morbid state uh, like uh, what we see in depressive illness the fear of contamination as regarded as obsessional symptom then depression the sadness that is associated with bereavement low mood that comes from frustration it can be a symptom secondary to another morbid process and understandable reaction or an illness in itself emotional abnormal expression of emotions emotional expressions that are very different from the average normal reaction patient is aware of the abnormality <coughs> excessive emotional response which is the result of learning and of different cultural norms lack of emotional response seen in depressed patients may uh, some may fail to exhibit an emotion where some would be expected for example person exposed to extreme stress may fail to show any emotion that is dissociation of affect then comes the derealization and depersonalization it's not a primary disorder of emotion but disorder of experience of self it is associated with feeling of being cut off or a feeling that object seem distant la belle and difference it's a variant of dissociation of affect seen in conversion disorder patients have severe symptoms and disabilities yet are undisturbed by their suffering then emotional indifference it's found in violent criminals usually able to discuss their unpleasant crimes without any emotions then smiling depression an unusual but significant abnormality in the expression of emotion who retains the communicatory smile but loses the emotional element so smiling is normally an expression of cheerfulness contentment or well being it's important in communication for example it indicates friendliness the placatory smile while asking for help extra abnormal expressions of emotions another one is denial defense that may manifest as lack of emotion occurs when person denies awareness of an event even though such an event has clearly taken place apathy it's confused with dissociation of affect emotional indifference and often associated with a sense of futility it's seen in prisoners schizophrenia a motivational a motivational syndrome associated with cannabis misuse perplexity tentative or bewildered uh, slightly puzzled state that occurs in anxiety mild clouding of consciousness and emerging schizophrenia as new psychotic experiences are occurring now coming to the morbid expression of emotion unlike in abnormal expression of emotion patient is unaware of the morbidity in emotional expression even though it is apparent to observers in adequacy or blunting of affect there is complete loss of all emotional life so that patient is indifferent to their own well being and that of others it manifests itself as social awkwardness and inappropriateness and it occurs in schizophrenia 
then comes the incongruity of affect misdirection of emotions such that an indifferent event may produce a severe emotional outburst while an event that objectively seems to be emotionally charged has no effect on patient's emotional response another one is parathymia <coughs> patients react to sad news with cheerfulness or laughter or being sad irritated by events that others react with indifference or pleasure then comes the emotional uh, constriction its most severe form is flattening of affect limitation in the usual range of emotional responses displays little emotional response in any direction expressed in the inappropriate direction and it's seen in chronic schizophrenic patient depression or elation may overshadow an underlying flattening then comes the stiffening of affect emotional response is at first congruent but does not alter as the situation changes and this is seen in schizophrenia patients then comes the lability of affect rapid and abrupt intense change in emotion largely unrelated to the external stimuli these shifts occur without warning seen normally uh, in very soft hearted patient personality disorder of borderline type may also exhibit this effect lability of effect is also commonly seen in mania mixed affective state organic brain disease like frontal lobe damage cerebrovascular accidents and also seen in depressive illness then comes the affective incontinent incontinence total loss of control over emotion in spontaneous outburst laughter or crying others seen commonly in cerebral atherosclerosis and in multiple sclerosis in its most severe form the term forced laughing or forced weeping are used now morbid disorders of emotion regarded as pathological states <coughs> although sometimes triggered by stressful events do not spontaneously resolve with removal of stressors and have their own independent momentum include those states that arise without any precipitate morbid depression most common in this group preoccupation with unpleasant thoughts loss of self confidence anxiety inner unrest anhedonia and difficulty making decisions psychomotor retardation it's a physical and psychological slowing due to inhibition of thinking and poor concentration loss of drive and decrease voluntary activity if severe it leads to depressive stupor anhedonia inability to enjoy anything in life or gain pleasure from everyday occurrences subset of diminution of intensity of emotions term anhedonia was coined in 1896 by rebert one of the best predictor to response and treatment then comes the morbid anxiety frequently occurs in association with morbid depression can cause difficulties in diagnosing depression in severe form presents as agitation it is seen in organic states like acute and chronic brain disease organic neurasthenia in which anxiety is mixed with depression and irritability and psychotic states like paranoia and schizophrenia <coughs> then comes the elation mood consistent of feelings of joy triumph and intense self satisfaction or optimism seen in mania hypomania where it is not related to any event and it is associated with pressure of speech flight of ideas racing thoughts distractibility and hypersexuality and it is seen in schizophrenia mostly in uh, hebephrenic form 
Then comes the euphoria. It's a state of extreme unreasonable cheerfulness, which may seem inappropriate and bizarre. Seen in organic states like frontal lobe impairment and multiple sclerosis, frontal lobe damage with euphoria often presenting as silliness, lack of foresight, and indifference is known as moria. Then comes the ecstasy. It's the heightened state of happiness with extreme well-being, feeling of rapture, bliss, and grace. Mind is usually occupied with a feeling of communi communion with God or some religious figure. Feeling of being in tune with the whole of nature or universe. And this is seen in dissociative disorder, schizophrenia, epilepsy, and LSD intoxication. Then comes alexithymia. It's described, it describes a specific disturbance in psychic functioning characterized by difficulties in the capacity to verbalize, affect, and elaborate fantasies. Difficulty in recognizing and describing their own feelings and in discriminating between emotional states and bodily functions. This is seen in somatoform disorders, substance abuse, and post-traumatic stress disorders. So, uh, concluding uh, this, emotion is a hard term to define. A number of bodily reactions accompany emotional states. For a number of emotions, different patterns of bodily activity can be detected. Assessing and observing the state and changes in mood is essential in psychiatry. Lack of cohesive psychopathological theory that has traditionally been associated with disturbance of affect. Thank you.